Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> we be on our mission, man. The goal in my career has always been to provide a voice for my people, to tell our story from our perspective in our own words. My company and my platform is Because of Them We Can. It's really about amplifying black history and the excellence that exists within the black community, past, present, and future. I currently attend the illustrious Howard University. I've always been an advocate for my fellow college students to always vote and use your vote for the change that you can make. I felt as excited the first time I voted as I did when I got my driver's license. Your first time to vote was kind of a rite of passage. How are y'all? Good, Good. y'all got your absentees, right? When I was little, my mom used to take me with her to go vote. Okay, bet, as long as we voting. And she would explain how your vote manifested around the city. When we think about the suffrage movement, it's great, but it didn't include black women. Even though you had black women working to secure voting rights, they knew that it didn't extend to them as black women, that it was really going to benefit white women. But they had the bigger picture in mind. My family has such a rich history, at least the history that I do know about. But I was always interested in knowing more about my family. I've tried to do my own searching, but it's been challenging because like, I'm missing like birth dates or exact cities and states where people are born. But I've been super curious and I've always wanted to know like, who am I, right? Like, who do I come from? I'm just amazed. My great-great-grandmother was an abolitionist. Oh my goodness. Charlotta. The freedom fighters of yesteryear, whether they were suffrage or they were abolitionists, they didn't accept no. They knew in their hearts, they knew in their intellects that it was wrong. Why should you have rights that I don't have, particularly this right to vote? Oh, more people. <laughs> Florida, hot. Hey, she named after a place too. Cool. <laughs> wow. That's wild. Florida. 1865. Oh, they can read and write, lit. <laughs> Love to see it. Okay. I learned how to read at such a young age to like know that she could read and write. At the age of nine, especially, you know, being born when the whole Civil War just ended, like, that's insane. Because that's, at least to her ancestors, like, that's their wildest dream. So this is my great, 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 great grandmother? Yeah. Wow. Fanny McLean. I've never heard of these last names in my family. I also think it's dope that her name is Fanny, because I'm recalling like a Fanny Lou Hamer, who is such an advocate for like women's rights and the right to vote and the rights of African American people. Okay. Then there's Juanita Netta Moore. Now that I have these names, I'm gonna take them with me everywhere that I go, but especially Fanny. Like I know Fanny couldn't vote. That wasn't a right or a privilege that was extended to her. So that's gonna be really special when I cast my vote to think about Fanny. Now that I have this knowledge of where I came from, it feels more like a coat of armor than it did just a layer of protection. So first we had to fight for the right to vote, but now we've got to fight for the top leadership positions my name is Unique Jones Gibson. My name is Brooklyn Hardiman. I'm Catherine Elizabeth Woods Liggins Hughes. <laughs> okay. I'm the great, 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 great. It's three, great. Okay. <laughs> great granddaughter of Fannie McLean. Great, great, great granddaughter of Florida Davis. I'm the great, great granddaughter of Charlotta Powell. Wow.